guys. Hello, Mary Lee, to everybody. It's Michelle Marie Tony. I thought I would take some time to uh, talk about what I proposed and go into more detail of showing it to you. And um, and I know I got the green screen on behind me. <coughs> We're not using green screen right now, but I wanted to uh, take the time to show you my proposed project. And um, so let's talk about the walker. Let's talk about that vehicle that helps me to do things because that is going to be our main actor here. Our main person, our creature, or device of interest. And talk about why. What I'm proposing. And uh, so, let me uh, talk a little bit about the backstory of this thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about where this idea evolved from. Okay, first of all. The first thing is that we were doing this uh, to carry things to and from back. Then it turns out that these bags have the crappiest handles. They're $2.50 a piece, and these bags, the handles rip off. Okay, really bad. I mean, you just rip, like... Like, I don't know why. I mean, and I have to be really heavy. Uh, so what I said to myself is, well, wouldn't it be nice instead of, see how this handle's hanging off like this, um, if I had something that could hold the bag like this. This is originally what I was proposing. Um, and then, so kind of like a, a hook, an S hook on both sides of the bag. But given the nature of the way these bags are holding up, I just see some of this. No, you know what? This, this thing would probably rip right here, uh, right where the S-hook is, or the U-hook. And I said, that ain't going to work. Um, so, then I had an old bookshelf that was falling apart. And it's one of those Ikea shelves, okay? And you can see the material there. It's just... Medium density fiberboard, it's kind of crappy, but uh, it is what it is, okay? It's MDF. It's not really fantastic. It's not going to be very strong, but it's probably better than nothing. So I said to myself, as I measured up originally the some 1x12 one, some one um, to put shelves on here so I could, you know, go down to the home Lowe's and pick up the plywood and build a... Or a um, one by twelve plank, a pine plank to do the same thing. Of twelve, um, it'll be twelve inches wide by twenty four inches long, and then I unfortunately I'd be stuck by the rest of this, the eight foot piece of wood. And I said to myself, "Is that's not cool? That's very expensive." And um, since I have this material, so what I did was I took this material. As a proof of concept, you can see how it slides right in here. Now, if I put a a hook here, it would have emerged. Remember, the way this is in, this thing has to be able to swing out a little bit in order to catch the um the catch that keeps it open. Okay, so you can't just screw or nail to screw it right down to the material. Um. And um, so that means you have the shelf on the top. You'll be able to hold things. Uh, maybe like heavy, like you can use almost like a TV cart, you know, or almost like a, um, uh, you know, those little TV tables that you sometimes see for watching dinners or use it for your laptop. And then when you're done, it'll hang on the hooks. will hang on the inside like this. This way you can actually have the shell on the stretch of my fingers, I don't have the hooks yet. So it'll be like this. So you'll still be able to use like water like normally, and then when you're ready to slip it up, you just slide it on, hook it here, 
hook it there, and boom, you're on. Also, if you need something lower, a little lower down, the same thing. You slip this out here, slip it down here, and then you can support carry bigger things, whereas you need a lower center of gravity. The I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, because on the top part, the shelf is fits perfect. It's a, it's got a little bit of leeway. Remember, you got these um, brackets here. I can't really see them here, but there's the. Um, see, that's too bad. It's not too noticeable on this top one, because you can see that there's this hook. So you can't put the hook right here on the side, because if you put the hook right there on the side, it's gonna right here. It's gonna bind it up. So you want to have it maybe about here. Maybe about an inch in here, inch in here, a corner. Um, I was going to choose angle iron brackets only because they're cheap. Um, uh, and I saw some nice uh, coat hooks that could have been worked just as well. And would still give kind of an art deco kind of look. Just kind of remember that whatever you use, um, you only got like you know, here, you only got like an inch. Sorry, you only got about an inch clearance up here. So, because when it's down like this, you got to get over this hump. So, whatever you choose, it's got to be able to go over this rod. It looks like this is about um, a little bit smaller. This is like three, three quarter inch aluminum tubing. So, um, but right now, you can use it, but because this is, uh, it's going to fall off. So that's why the hooks need it, because the hooks will keep the shelf from sliding out. Same thing down here. You want to have the shelf so that it doesn't slide down here. Originally, I was going to put it down here, which means it could have been maybe about two inches longer. I still have the old bookshelf outside and this tip will need to be cut up. Um, if I can borrow a table saw and uh, again some carpenter's glue and glue it there. But then once you do that you're not going to be able to be able to do this up here because then it would not fit in there. So in some ways this is a much better arrangement so you can use the same piece for both so you can pick the one that works for you and that is indeed one of the reasons why we're designing that circuit to be just like that so you can have the shelf you need and be able to support things oh yes and by the way the bags well they're not a problem on the lower shelf like this you can see no strain on the handles. How perfect can you get? There's nothing wrong with being cheap. I have to be honest. It's it's if it's something I'm using, if it's recycled material, if it's making use with what you have, and it's not gonna cost you a mint, why not? You know, I mean I don't even tell me say why even bother the put polyurethane sealer on this? It's just gonna basically be around in the dry. Excuse me, um, common sense, first of all, number one, is I don't have a car, so, yes, this gets out in the elements, yes, this gets out in rain, and snow, and slush, and everything else, and so, yes, a sealant such as polyurethane is going to be essential to keep this, oh, um, this medium density fiberboard from coming apart, okay? Um, absolutely important to do that because it's going to fall apart otherwise. And that's something that's going to be an issue to consider for the future. Um, now, some of you guys may shame me when you say this. Yes, number one is, okay, how does this form show allow you to walk with a walker? Well, let me talk about that. You know, I've watched a lot of people when sit with walkers. And there are people walking with them like this. I'm sorry, how do I use that? Okay. And they walk like this. Okay. I've seen people push them up the hills like this. 
which I don't do. I'm just, I'm seeing people sit right where my, where the bag is right now. But for me, it's easy to walk like this because it makes it possible for me to support my weight. Remember, the whole point with this walker was so that if this knee came out, if this knee flipped backwards and I lose my balance, is that the walker would be there for me to grab onto to support my weight. And that's the reason we have it. And I can totally see that even here, this setup here, allows me to do just that. I can support my weight. I can, um, conversely, put the play with a pin. Okay. Put my pad up here. Might be a little bit better idea. But basically the same thing. You can still support your weight. You can still set your legs down. And... <clears throat> You can still back around, turn around, and go to the chair. That was the whole idea, the whole design. Unfortunately, also noticed that the bag has to fall off, but that's okay. There's nothing in it right now. So, it's a great idea. It will work. It will work. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about was related to something Pepper Princess covered is living in a less spending economy. Like I mentioned on the medium density fiber board, it's just the same thing. I could go out there and those, I could buy a brand new piece of 12, of one by 12, eight foot or six foot long piece of plank. I can go ahead, have the Sawyer saw it down the size. I can have the Sawyer cut me down some also one inch, um, strips from the same ply some from the same board i can then try to find a way to stuff the rest of the board into christa's car um <laughs> i think you see where we're getting here um that's a lot of frustration just to make a shelf um for a walker okay uh, not something i would recommend people do unless you really really are just insisting on having a walker that's really high class and then you still gotta put polyurethane on it you still gotta paint it um anyway to seal out the moisture um so you're just paying more money for lugging a big piece of one by 12 and then you're gonna figure out how to get it there into a friend's car and hope that she can safely drive it home <sighs> not exactly uh, something I would call a fantastic idea. I mean, because even after you cut out the the 24-inch piece and then the one-inch pieces, you're still going to be stuck with something that's close to six feet long, and then you have to figure out how to get that into a, into her into her sedan. Um, not, and then once you get that home, and then of course you're going, well, gee, what am I going to do with the remainder of this? One by 12. I didn't need the rest of this. I just needed that one piece, that one 12 by 24 section, and maybe the little pieces to act as stops. And now I have to realize that I'm going to have to throw it. You don't know, have to figure out something to do with the rest of the one by 12s. Um, yeah, that's something to remember that is a problem. So, also, let's talk about something else we're working for a future project, and this is not that long for now. We're going to be working with this on my birthday. Um, let's talk about um, something else I'm working on. This is a Dell Latitude laptop. Now, as I had to take the basil off because we got to take this off to get to the keyboard. Okay? The keyboard... As you can see, looks like, fuck, it is broken. The two key came off, the three key broke off. It does not operate anymore, as far as I can tell. So, I don't know if this thing is still stuck with three, it'll always be down permanently or not. I checked the iFixit instructions on how to replace it. I got a replacement one from Dell, and it's coming. And um, this keyboard, um, this computer guy was a smoker. And unfortunately, you can see he's got keys that are sticking. They don't work. They have um, this key here. It does not go up and down. 
and stuff up. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to clean this key out too. Uh, maybe some living alcohol. Okay. And there's another key over here. It's stuck too. Oh, I'm really stuck. All right, so gonna have to clean all these keyboards out. All these keys. This is the volume up. This is the volume down. Um, it's just uh, just a terrible mess. The keys are this keyboard here doesn't look so bad. Um, this key is trashed. These trays are trashed. This screen's good. The screen's good. Um, you got nicotine glaze all over this computer. I have to clean this really, really well. Um, but the whole point is, it's done when we're done. We're going to have the computer completely refurbished with a new keyboard on it. And I don't know if it has 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM in it. It has Windows 7 or Windows 10. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, this got the track point. As um, the people over there at um, IBM ThinkPad calls it, Lenovo ThinkPad TrackPoint keyboards. Got these little screws here. You see a screw here, screw here, screw here, and screw here. And then after this, you can take this keyboard out and replace it. Um, so for about 12 bucks, I'm going to be able to totally get this i5. Uh, machine, it's a Dell Latitude, uh, well, so it's right on the little piece here, what it is. It's a Dell Latitude, right here. Uh, 63, uh, 6430. So, we're gonna get this keyboard all fixed up, kind of make this look really nice, and, uh, I have the charger for it and everything. So this is gonna be a great little fixer up project and it's not gonna be worth a lot it's gonna be very expensive it's gonna be pretty cheap um it's not by any means any cutting edge laptop is far from it but it's a it's probably a fourth generation i5 but um you know it's still better than nothing and now has the nvidia graphics card in it um so that would be great for doing some everyday things with um Linux, because um, I'm thinking about installing Linux on the 320 meg hard drive. Unless I can get a good deal on a another type of hard drive. There's a hard card edge connector here. I don't know if that's for the network modem. It says expansion card, so um, I don't know what kind of expansion card that goes in there. I don't think it's PCM CIA or card bus, so I don't know. There's also here shows for a contactless smart card, which is optional accessory. I guess it's got this kind of stupid basil here to fill it in. So if you want to put a smart card in here, um, yeah, that'll be what I want. It's uh, certainly it's an idea, right? Fix it up. So that's all we're gonna try. Speed of computers, let's talk about this one really quickly because this one, as we know, has a new graphics card in it and it has been a study and has worked well. Um, I wanted to address a couple things about some of the consumer nuts out there um, that are saying to me is, why are you fixing up a computer from 2009 when you could buy a brand new machine from 2021, 2022, and um, and for the same price. Well, first of all, this machine here is one of the best made, most expandable Macs, um, except for the new 2019 Mac Pro which kind of continues on the legacy. Um, this is original to 5, 4.1 cheese grater, then the firmware upgrade to 5.1. And it is, I need to clean it a little bit, but um, it is a very reliable machine. So um, the biggest problem with this machine 
It's a pack that is that it's only got 16 gigabytes of RAM, 2.66 gigahertz hard drive. I'm sorry, 2.66 gigahertz processor for core xenon. Um, it doesn't seem to be the processor speed. That's the biggest kill shield with this thing. That's that Chrome takes up the entire. If you let it, if you let it have a chance to get at it, so it use up the entire um, memory. So. That's the reason I want to fix this up and make it better as well. And I'm obviously 32 gigabytes of ECC register RAM is not cheap. It's not as expensive as it can be, but it's certainly not cheap unless you want to buy used, um, which might be an option if you want to buy used RAM instead of new. Um, these can, this computer can be brought up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So 64 gigabytes of RAM for about, I'm going to say, mm, maybe about 100 bucks, okay, for ECC register RAM, 64 gigabytes. And that would be more than adequate. The processor speed is still, will still be running into 2.66. And I could later upgrade that to a 3.46 gigabyte processor. But then you want to definitely want to bring the RAM up to 1.666 gigahertz. Um, front side bus because the fact is that the 3.46 gigahertz um, processor, the Xenon 6 core, uh, is going to be needing a much faster RAM. And uh, for right now, like I said, I'm upgrading it up a little bit at a time. We already have uh, USB 3.0 ports on it, we already have. Um, everything that you can imagine for everyday work. So that's why the reason I'm not really worried about blowing a wad here, buying memory and stuff. But it certainly is something that I'm working on. And I want to make this computer as a, as a key part of our setup, which we know we have over here the other part of the setup here, which is the camera. I took this off because I'm using the bracket right now for the other camera. This USB camera, our USB mixer, and my headphones. The headphones get a lot of jokes because the fact is they're so old. But you know what? These headphones, as old as they are, have worked fine. Although they are starting to show their age. They are starting to crack. They're start on the, the, the leather is starting to crack on them. The cord is starting to show signs of age. But you got to admit... That this is a um, pretty reliable setup. There's the other microphone with a windscreen on it. Um, the video capture device is up there for the other cameras. And uh, the studio gear over there and everything. So what I'm trying to say is that this um, is what we do here. We use a lot of secondhand stuff. We use a lot of things that are old or broken or decrepit. Repurpose them. Make things work. Um, because that's just the way we are. It's always been my nature. So, before you start insulting my computer, or me, or for that matter, just keep in mind one thing, okay? This is what I do. This is how I do things. And this is the way it's always been. And, um, even with my body injuries and shit, I'm still going to keep doing what I do. I will talk to my doctor about that topic on the 21st um but if i find out that the physical therapy people want to place me like the one orthopedic surgeon did for 200 dollars on medicare just to sit in his waiting room um no sorry not happening all right so that's something to keep in mind what i do the things i do and uh the fact that i love doing what i do it makes me happy makes me enjoy myself and uh, it gives me something to do. I like to keep my hands. I like to keep working on projects. It keeps me sane. And it's like my dad. My dad was the same way. You know, give him some, give him some wood and some ideas, and he'll be downstairs in his wood shop and creating all kinds of neat stuff. So yeah, it was the same way with me. All right, guys. Talk to you later. You have a nice day. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye.